Hello everyone, I'm Brennan Marcel. This is Joel A. Erickson. Two weeks into the season and open, open dates here. We gave you some of our general impressions of the team so far at Auburn. But what's been the most surprising thing to you so far, Joel, two weeks into the season here? Uh, I think the biggest thing is the running back situation is generally seems to be pretty sorted out. Yeah. You know, uh, Gus said all off season that they do a by committee approach. Uh, mm -hmm. I kind of figured it would go it somewhat end up being the lead back, but I figured it'd be a couple games into the season because uh, Gus has never really had a by committee approach. He doesn't do that. He has a lead back kind of yeah. secondary option. Uh, but right out the gate here, uh, I think off the top of my head, it's 41 carries for Cameron Artis Payne, yeah. 20 for Corey Grant. That's about the division you expect, and then some other stuff for the other guys. It it's, seems like they entered it knowing exactly who they wanted to run. Yeah, I mean, it, all the talk here in August was it looked like Cap was the number one guy. He's proven it so far. He's leading the SEC in carries, yards, and touchdowns. Auburn's got their lead back right now. And they got a pretty good number two guy and situational guy. Mm -hmm. And Corey Grant, who has obviously shown that he can run between the tackles, too. He had a couple of nice runs Sunday in between mm -hmm. the tackles. Or Saturday, excuse me. Sunday, would be, it was. Sunday would be the NFL. Uh, my, my biggest surprise is Nick Marshall seemed to be a little bit off. I, I And not just San Jose State, but even Arkansas, the zone read. Mm -hmm. He's made a couple of bad reads that you did not see last season. I don't know if it's just he's pressing too much. It's early in the year. They did try to do some different things against Arkansas with a read and a defensive tackle, which was interesting. Didn't really see a lot of that, I don't think, in San Jose State game. And then also the fumble issue. Mm -hmm. uh, that That's disappointing because they have stressed that so much. He lost six fumbles last season. Then he loses one against San Jose State. He's got to get that corrected because it's going to bite him at some point. We kept saying that last season. I never did. Mm -hmm. But it, it, numbers dictate it's going to bite him at some point. He's got to clean those things up. And those are things he can control. He can do that. It's nothing out of control. He's got to get better. I think the key thing to watch on the zone read is teams have a very specific thing they're doing against it now. They're sending people out towards Marshall yes. on every snap. Arkansas was doing two at a time. Uh, and San Jose State did the same thing. And I wonder if maybe that in this this season is going to be what the offense has to adjust to a little bit going forward, the way Gus has kind of adjusted before. Uh, that draw play that went big twice against San Jose State, I don't remember them running that no. much last year. Uh, Nick said it was a base play, but it's not one they ran much last year. I'd expect to see some more, like, some more stuff designed to get him in space. Uh, Gus has got some stuff up his sleeve. We all know he does. Yeah. Uh, he might not look like it's up his sleeve. We learned last year that he's not as big of a trickster as he has been in the past. Uh, but there'll be some wrinkles, some little stuff. We'll try to point that stuff out. Sometimes it's hard. Uh, biggest disappointment? Uh, Nick was kind of along those lines. Also, I think just the, the miscommunication on the back end on defense, on some of these big pass plays, I thought they were going to be better early in the season. Credit that to some of the things. We were talking about this earlier. Teams are coming out doing things that they weren't showing on film last season. San Jose State printed a really amazing, tricky, nifty play where they brought a guy out of the backfield, looked like they were setting up a bubble screen, and the running back slipped out past uh, Josh Holsey and Chris Frost for a long 75-yard touchdown play. Tough to defend, but uh, some of those issues, guys getting beat on double move, things of that sort, guys going over their head, uh, that's got to be fixed because they're about to go to the Kansas State team that Tyler Lockett, he just changes the game, and uh, obviously they're going to quarterback draws, but they're going to try and go up, up top a few times. I was expecting to see a little bit more edge rush. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe the real thing, the real thing there is I was one. I, I don't know. I haven't gone through the snaps, uh, the film yet to look at the snaps from uh, the San Jose State game. They haven't really used Casey McKenzie much there, at least off, off the, the top edge, of my head. Yeah. Uh, now that might be because he's playing so many snaps defensively that they want to keep him fresh. Uh, but they just, other than Elijah Daniel, who I thought's done some nice stuff, uh, it's hard to see it unless they make a sack. But I noticed his number there a couple times on Saturday. Uh, they just haven't had that guy who can just turn the corner the way D4 did. Um, and uh, they got some interior rush with Montrevious Adams gave right. But you, you really want that guy who bends the edge and kind of blows things up. So it'd be interesting to see how that goes going forward. At this point last year, they didn't have that guy either, but that was because D4 was hurt. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Obviously, Lawson could come back at some point, but who knows? Who knows? We're two weeks in the season. It's an open day. Auburn's got plenty of time to fix and correct things. 
September 18th, Thursday night, Auburn goes to Kansas State for a big road test, number 19, Wildcats.